Hello, hello! Welcome to the Moana Adams Podcast. I'm your host, Moana, a 15-year-old with a ton to say about mental health, wellness, self-love, and a whole lot more. So let's get into it. Hello, hello! Welcome to episode 30. I haven't done a solo episode in a while, and this wasn't supposed to be a solo episode. Um, I actually recorded this morning with a friend of mine for this episode and the audio file got corrupt and an episode needs to go out in within the next three hours um you might be able to tell already but my voice i am losing it um my throat hurts incredibly bad so you should all be very grateful that i'm talking to you right now because i'm in a lot of pain but it's okay because today's going to be a short good episode that it's something that i was really excited to talk about and i am still excited to talk about (sighs) But it's been a very difficult episode to get out because originally I was supposed to record this with someone else and we couldn't do it. So then I asked a friend of mine to do it and we did it this morning and the file got corrupt and I can't fix it and now I'm doing it solo. So today we're talking about how to maximize your summer and make the most of your summer and summer bucket lists. But first, currently loving is Korean barbecue. I had this for the second time. Um, Today is Monday. I think it was Saturday. I think it was Saturday. I had it for the first time in a really long time. I've only had it once other than that before. And it was so good. The glass noodles were delicious. Um, The rice cakes and the um, all the different sauces. I loved all of them. They were all so good. We got brisket and lemon chicken, and I was going to try squid. My aunt and I ordered it, and we were going to try it, and then his mom and my dad were like, can you even eat that? Because I'm allergic to shellfish. And well, technically, we don't know that for sure, but both of my parents are allergic, so it's like apparently very likely that my brother and I are or something. Anyway, I've never had it before, and we haven't gotten tested yet or anything like that. So we were like, can you even eat that? Like, a shellfish... Is squid a shellfish? And I looked it up, and it was very unclear. Like, Google did not have a clear answer, but in the end, we figured out that it it really generally is considered a shellfish for some reason. I I guess because it's a mollusk. I don't know. I didn't get to try the squid. I was very upset about it. I was excited. But it's okay. It was still delicious. And it was really good. Like, it was surprisingly good. And the lemon chicken was delicious. The brisket was delicious. The steak was my favorite. We also got pork belly, which I wasn't a big fan of because it was very fatty. But that's my currently loving. It's Korean barbecue. And I want to have it again, like, right now. It was really good. And we spent all day at the pool, and I'm tired. But it was really good, and I really want some right now. But that's not the point. The point is, Korean barbecue is delicious and unique, and if you haven't had it yet... You should definitely go and try it. I definitely think it's a hit or miss kind of thing. Like, you either love it or you hate it. But I loved it. I want to go again. And, yeah, that's my currently loving. My grateful is new friends. Um, Last Wednesday, I went to a pool party. Um, A friend of mine hosted. And it was Kate. I love Kate. And her friends, who some of them I never met or I've only met once before, came And they are just really awesome people, and I really love them, and we all just get along so well, and I'm really grateful to, like, make new connections. You know, when I left, I stuck close with my close friends, but there were a lot of people, because I used to be someone who was friends with everybody, and those people kind of fizzled out once I went on the trip, and now I'm, like, finding new relationships, and that's, like, really exciting to get to know new people and, you know, add them to my circle and become close with them. So I'm just very grateful for them and getting the opportunity to meet new people. So, let's do the actual episode because I have three hours to get this out to you. So, first of all, why are we talking about maximizing your summer? What's the point? Why is there a whole episode on it? Why? I definitely feel like we have all felt the end of summer guilt where we feel like we wasted so much time doing nothing or just binging shows on Netflix and we feel guilty and lazy and we beat ourselves up over it because we did absolutely nothing. 
and I know not everybody does this, but I feel like most people have probably felt this. And it, of course, like, sounds nice to binge Netflix all summer, in theory. But in practice, like, in practice, it's not healthy. It's fine to do it sometimes, but just, like, not all the time. Like, I have a summer watch list of things that I want to watch. And if you know me, you know I will binge the crap out of stuff all the time. It took me three months to watch all 15 seasons of Criminal Minds. I know there's a 16th season, but it's, like, separate. But it took me three months to watch all of it. Um, so I will, like, binge, binge, binge. And when I find a new show that I really like, I will watch the whole thing so quickly. And then I, like, won't watch anything for a while. But I also have a summer watch list. Um, the Outer Banks is on there because everyone's told me I need to watch it and I've never seen it. Um, the summer I turned pretty. I'm super excited for the next season to come out. It's coming out, I think, in July. Um, I love the first season. I haven't read the books. They're on my summer reading list. And I want to read them. I am very on the jelly side. But everybody's been telling me that if you have read the books, you would be on Conrad's side. And I'm just like, I don't know if I can switch or it'll make me switch. But I really want to read them and see what everyone's talking about and, you know, get an idea. But I'm really excited for that to come out. And then... Kind of my, like, silly, dumb show to, you know, just, like, play when I'm doing laundry or just, like, have a very mindless show. Uh, Doogie, Kamalola, Kama, Kamalola, MD. It's a Disney Plus show. I hate every, like, I feel like Disney Plus originals suck. And this one isn't that good. But I just think it's really cute that it's, like, in Hawaii, and I just think it's adorable, and I love things that are based in Hawaii, and it's very summery, and it's just, like, a cute, like, kid show to watch. So that's almost so on my list, because the second season came out, and yeah. So it's okay to binge sometimes, but do not spend all summer watching Netflix. I promise you'll feel like crap afterward. And that end of summer anxiety, or August anxiety, August anxiety is the anxiety that we feel towards the end of summer, start of August, and it's, um, it's very, this mommy just told me she loved me in sign language and distracted me, um, August anxiety is the anxiety we feel in August at the end of summer, and I was learning about it. I didn't know this was a real thing with a real term that people, like doctors and, you know, scientists and whoever writes all the articles on Google that we all instantly trust. I did not know this was a real thing, but it is. And basically, it's that feeling of anxiety at the end of summer, right before school, before school starts, when you're worried about you know, adding the school stress or, you know, just like the extra responsibility that comes with the fall and the winter and not, it not being summer anymore. And I think that they described it really well. And I totally lost the article and I'm totally stealing this, but they said the best way to get rid of this is to be mindful. Now I'm not talking about meditation. I promise. We're not talking about that today. I think the way they put being mindful is really, really well done. And I feel like People say, like, oh, be mindful, and nobody has any idea how to really do that or, like, what that really means. And so I feel like this puts it really nicely. But they said, imagine you're at the beach or at the lake with your family or your friends, whoever. And you guys are setting up, you're sitting down, you're just, like, enjoying it and looking around at everyone, and then you remember in two weeks you have to go back to school. Or even if you're an adult, like... Sometimes, depends on what job you have, you might have the summers off or you might be on family vacation and you know you have to go back to work. And you start thinking about that and the stress that comes with that and the fact that you're not going to be, you know, experiencing a lazy day on the beach, you're going to be working and doing school. So being mindful is instead of letting that change your mood and continuing to worry about that, you recognize the fact that, yes, you don't have a ton of time left in the summer but you're not going to let that change your mood and you're going to go back to a, appreciating the time that you're having and being in the moment. 
be in the moment and enjoy what's happening in front of you rather than worrying about what's going to happen when you start school or work or whatever it is. So that's why we're talking about this and why I'm going to tell you how you can maximize your summer. I was doing my summer planning this week and I'm still working on it. I'm a little bit behind. But how do we maximize our summer? Step one, y'all always know I say this, but to plan. I'm a planner. Figure it out. And to plan, you have to have an idea of what you want. What do you want to get out of your summer? And you need inspiration for that because you might not know what you want. And I made a Pinterest board to use as my summer vision board. And I put things on there, just mostly aesthetic photos of things that I wanted to experience or the energy, the things that I wanted to put my energy towards. So being by the pool, being with friends, doing small, fun things, um, going on adventures, going on hikes, working on the podcast, working on content. Those were some of the things that I put on there because that's what I wanted to put my energy towards during the summer. And you need to see what you want to ask yourself. What do you want to get out of it? What do you want to get out of your summer? Do you want to save money or earn money? Do you want to learn something, educate yourself on something, a new language, earn school credits, do a summer internship and learn about a future career? Do you just want to make memories and enjoy the summer and, you know, be a little bit lazy and that's okay. Like, just enjoy it and experience things and have fun. Or do you want to focus on your health, your mental or your physical and get into a good headspace or focus on working out or eating or drinking water and hydrating your body? What do you want to get out of your summer? For me... I'm focusing on three main things. I'm not focusing on education. I did that last summer, and I'm not doing it again this summer. I'm focusing on working on the podcast and content and getting my work things together and my money together and focusing on those things and spending whatever time I can on creating new episodes, planning content, Figuring out ways to make more passive income and working on the job that I already have. Because there's a lot of people getting summer jobs right now. A lot of my friends and I already have like a job and I have multiple. And focusing on those things and figuring out the best way to do those things and prepping for the fall and like when I go back to school. That kind of thing. But my two other focuses are my health because I definitely have not been focusing on that at all recently. Mental or physical. I've talked about this before, but I definitely feel like since we've gotten back, I've been a consistency machine and just pumping out content, and I have not been putting the consistency energy into my own health and making memories, because, and especially spending time with my friends. I did not get any time with friends last summer because I wasn't home, and I mean, it was great, but like, I'm really excited to be home and, you know, spend time with those people because I know we only have two years left until we're all going to go our own separate ways one way or another and once you have an idea of what you want to get out of it set specific summer goals I probably shouldn't yell my throat hurts really bad but I want to save x money x number of dollars I want to read x number of books I want to work out x number of times a week set specific goals I want to see my friends X times a month, X times a week, whatever it is. Set specific goals and figure out what you need to do to get there. Like, what do you need to do to get yourself to that point? And my next thing is use a calendar. Please find a calendar you like and use it because you're going to need it in the future. And it's a great skill to develop. And there's so many events and vacations and parties to keep track of and hanging out with friends. There's so many different things to keep track of when, during the summer, you're not in school. So you're going to more events. Somebody's doing sparklers. It is Memorial Day. They are doing fireworks over there. That's fun. Okay. But figure out a calendar. Pick any of them. I use Google and Notion. I crossed over mine, so... My Google Calendar is attached to my Notion and everything. Just use the Apple one on your phone. 
or a physical one. If you want to keep a bullet journal over the summer or any sort of journal, make draw a calendar in the front or get a planner. But come up with a way to keep your things organized. Please, I'm begging you. It's so helpful. And try your best. And I know this is really hard. It's really hard for me. But try to make plans as far in advance as you possibly can. And write them in your calendar so you know when they're happening. So you know when things are happening because I promise it'll make things so much easier. And then the next thing is find someone to hold you accountable. Find someone or something that is going to remind you to get out of bed, remind you to drink water, remind you to get outside, remind you to do things with people and experience things and say yes more. You could play a game. I've seen a lot of people doing Pixar didn't happen. Me and my friends are doing Class Dojo, so like you get points and stuff, um, which is really difficult on my end because I'm the one running it, and I have to be like the teacher and the student and all this stuff, but it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Social media... Something my dad talks about a lot is when he was doing green drinks every day, he would post an Instagram story of his green drink, and he had to do that every day, so he had to drink it every day. Um, Friends, find someone who also has the same or similar summer goals, or even doesn't, but can be there and is reliable enough to text you and be like, how much water have you had today? Did you eat breakfast this morning? Did you get out of bed? How many episodes did you watch? Did you... Do Did you read yet? Did you... These things. Someone who you can trust to keep you accountable. And then this is probably one of my favorites, but summer scrapbooks. My birthday is in five days. I'm turning 16. And <clears throat> I wanted to do an activity of some sort. And I picked summer scrapbooks. So we're going to decorate the covers and put like summer 2023 and put stickers on it and all these pretty things. So that we all have journals and scrapbooks to keep over the summer. And hopefully we use them. But I'm really excited. And then my last thing is, write a summer bucket list. Please do this. If you're not playing Pixar Didn't Happen or Class Dojo or anything like that, at least write a bucket list. And try to check off as many as you can. And know that you probably won't check them all off. But check off some of them. Please, I'm begging you. It's It makes things so much more fun. And it will feel good with your mental health and get you outside and in the sun just get outside i have some things for you to add to your summer bucket list and serenity my friend who was supposed to do this episode with me but it got corrupted and everything she um she gave me some summer bucket list items and i wanted to share hers with you so you know not all of these are mine like every other one is mine but climb to the top of the mountain Unless you live in the Midwest, there's probably a hiking trail that goes on top of a mountain, at least within a few hours of you. If there's not, that really sucks. But climb to the top of a mountain. It's so much fun. Um, There's a trail in Georgia um, that we go to, and I think it's called Swanee Mountain. And it has um, a peak. You can see, like, four different states, I think. Um, which is really cool, and it's really pretty and a lot of fun. Um, this one was Serenities, but go to a drive-in movie. If there's one near you, I feel like there are very few options for this. Or, like, set up your own if you have a projector. And, like, invite people to come if you have the space for that. That could be really fun. Uh, my next one is something I did last year, and it's a ton of fun. So, like, if you get the chance, do it. Stand under a waterfall. It is so much fun. We did it in Nebraska, which is, like, the only cool thing to do in Nebraska. But it was so much fun, and it was really cool, and there were a bunch of crazy bridal parties, having bachelorette parties, and shotgunning beers. But it was a lot of fun, and I promise, like, it is so much fun to do, even though it's freezing cold. The next thing is just, like, try to hang out with friends as much as possible, and spend time with them, because during the winter and in the fall, everyone is so much more busy. We were talking about this this morning, but everybody's schedules, it's so hard because the weekends are the only chance you get to hang out with your friends during school, during the school year. And we have other responsibilities. We have family events and sports and those kinds of things. And those things don't always line up with everyone else's things and events. So 
it's difficult to find the time to hang out all the time during the school year, but in the summer, you can hang out whichever night of the week you want, and for longer and for more time without worrying about homework or getting to bed on time or any of those things. Next thing is obviously something that I put on, and it's cliff jumping. I've never done this, and I really want to do it, and I have no idea where I'm going to do it, but I think it would be really fun, and it's kind of scary, but I do really want to try it. And then we have jet skiing, something Serenity wanted to do, and I was like, I totally want to do that, and we should do it together, because we live near a lake, and I think it would be really fun to do. I've never done it. My parents love to do it. They've done it a few times. And then another one of mine was watching the sunrise. I love doing this. It's a lot of fun. It makes you feel good. Like, it heals your soul when you watch the sunrise from start to finish. Not start to finish, but, like, when it starts dark and, like, it goes, like, high enough to where you can see the whole thing. It just, like, it really heals your soul. And it feels good to watch that kind of thing. And it just hits different than the sunset. Almost everyone sees the sunset every day. But the sunrise is just different. And then Serenity wanted to go to Dollywood. It's up in Tennessee, so it's a few hours away from us, but it does look like a ton of fun. We have friends who have been there, and I do want to go. I think think we do have a few friends who have been there, and the food is supposed to be really good, and it's just all around supposed to be like a ton of fun and a really fun trip. And then I really want to go tent camping or backpacking. I spent all year camping in an RV, but... I've never done real tent camping before or backpacking, and it's something that Smallman and I really want to do, and I just want to try it and see how I feel about it, and there's, you got to do it in somewhere that's really pretty, um, so I want to do that, but not really around where we live, there's nowhere that's, like, stupid gorgeous and is worth sleeping in a tent for, but I know people who have done it, like, down in the Gulf or up in North Georgia, that it's really pretty, so I'd love to do that. And then, this is something that Serenity and I kind of came up with together, but to have a Summer I Turned Pretty party, and something like I said, Petty, Petty, wait, what is it? Pity party, no, it's the Summer I Turned Pretty party, like a binging watching party, and invite all our friends, and watch it together, And then I really want to go rock climbing outdoors at some point this summer because I haven't gotten a chance to do that in a really long time. Um, I just don't have the gear for it. And I've only done it a few times, and that wasn't really for real. I wasn't into climbing yet. That's what got me into climbing, but I didn't know what I was doing. So I really want to do top rope, and I really want to get outside in Boulder, and I, I want to do it so bad. There's a couple places in Georgia that I know a lot of people go, and my gym offers guided tours, so I'm hoping to take advantage of that at some point in the summer. And then the last thing is go tubing. It's something Serenity came up with, and I thought she meant, like, on the lake, and you, like, get pulled behind the boat, because that's a ton of fun. But she meant, like, river tubing, which is also so much fun. Um, there's a few places to do it around where we live, but definitely by far the best place is Helen. Um, it's much more fun than, like, the Chattahoochee, and... Yeah, that's all I got for you. I know, I said it was a short episode, but my throat is in so much pain right now, and I still need to edit and upload this. So I hope you guys understand how much I love you, and wanted to make sure this gets out. I'm going to edit this and post it within the next hour-ish, and then go to bed and try and fix this sore throat, because I'm in so much pain. But I love y'all, and I appreciate everyone who supports me, and I hope that you find a way to make the most of your summer and maximize your summer. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to give this podcast a rate and review, as well as follow me on all my socials linked in the show notes. Don't forget to drink some water, and I'll talk to you later.